Well, Gary, what's it been like the last couple of games to run the ball as well as you guys have? It's been a lot of fun. It uh, feels good to, uh, I don't know, I feel like we're building momentum. Um, the O-line's playing well, we're communicating well. Um, the tight ends are getting on the same page with the tackles. The running backs are seeing it. We're all kind of playing as one unit right now, so that's uh, definitely a rewarding feeling. How are things different for you guys now that you're blocking for a mobile quarterback? Um, I think the biggest difference is just uh, how the defense flows on the backside. Um, if they're biting too much on the run, then Taylor obviously has an opportunity to pull it and gain some yards, and that forces the defense to respect that. And if they're sitting there trying to play both, then that's going to open up gaps for the running backs. Dirk said that they did a good job, or teams are trying to cage Taylor in, is what they said. How do you see that on the field in the scrum when teams try to cage a quarterback? And what does that look like from your perspective? Um, so, yeah, it's. It happened to us numerous times. Uh, Air Force definitely brought a lot of line movement. See on the backside, you know, I have a three tech slanting across my face. The end's doing the same thing to John. Then they have a linebacker or a nickel or somebody kind of spilling to the backside. That's forcing Taylor to still hand that ball off even though the, the D-line's flowing hard. So, um, I mean, I know we have a good plan for trying to still fix that and work on that. But yeah, it's just, I don't know, at the end of the day, it adds a whole other aspect for the defense that they have to respect. How nice have the last three weeks been for the offensive line? I mean, in terms of just your guys' confidence, your level of play, all that. It's been, yeah, it's been fun. It's been nice for sure. Um, ultimately, I think, you know, we always go back and watch film, and it's it's never perfect. So that's the, the encouraging part is, yeah, we're playing pretty well. We're getting the job done at a pretty high level, but we're still chipping away at improving things. And I think that's ultimately the most exciting part is we haven't reached like that full potential yet. We were talking with OJ about it a little bit last week, but why do you guys think you have made this, this massive jump as a unit, you know, from what was it, game three to game four or whatever it was? Just kind of trust in our process and buying in and trust in the game plan that the coaches are putting in and really, I don't know, as a unit, just watching an extra film together with, you know, just the O-line guys, the tight ends, tailbacks, like all of us have really been working to continue to build on that. Um, it's not like anything has dramatically changed scheme-wise. Like what we have in is what we have in. We can make tweaks week to week, but ultimately we're just continuing to chip away and put the work in. We haven't talked to you since then, but I mean, you, JL, and you guys are like two San Diego guys who the Aztecs didn't offer. Uh, beating them, like, is that was that kind of cool and a nice little uh, revenge a little bit? Yeah, it's a rewarding feeling. Um, I don't, I don't buy into that too much, okay. but uh, yeah, I mean. The way we look at it is each week is the most important game that we have, um, and especially once we get into conference play, like that's part of the mountain that we're climbing in order to get to the championship. Yeah. Uh, you obviously had the, the one penalty there. Um, what's kind of the balance for you of like just wanting to just completely dominate and the guy in front of you, but also like you know having to try and toe that line a little bit? Yeah, I mean it's definitely walking the line, and I crossed it, and that's an opportunity to definitely learn and just keep things in line. Um, we're playing physical. I think that's a good thing. Um, that penalty obviously hurts the team and we don't want to do that. So yeah, just got to continue to find that line and stay on it and not, not cross it. <laughs> what was the punishment? Did they make you run? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little, little physical activity, nothing crazy. And you know, we spoke about it and we're just going to learn and move forward. With, Tay with Taylor, in terms of his command of the huddle, command of the offense, improvement throwing the ball, just from, from when he took over as a starter a couple weeks ago till now, what, what have you seen uh, from him in terms of his improvement? Um, I think just his command of the offense and his presence. He's, uh, he's, he's building confidence, playing with a little bit of swagger, and I think he's just going to continue to grow and build on that. We've seen a lot of Mason Randolph this year. What stands out about him on the field, and where has he grown the most? Um, Mason's funny. He's just he's dense, he's strong, he's physical. Um, he's a young guy, you know, he had a couple of hiccups early on in the Oregon State game, but he's been building and playing at a, at a very high level. So it's fun to see him just kind of getting after guys right now. Is there a different vibe playing at home? Absolutely. Um, away games always have their own little different wrinkle that you have to handle. Um, home games are great. You know, we, we have the same process always, and uh, we know what to expect at home. It's just, it's an incredible atmosphere. Um, the fans are amazing in Albertson Stadium. We've been packing it out, and it's been loud and an uh, amazing place to play out. Dirk's mentioned that when you guys get in the red zone, uh, defensive and putting blitzing you a lot, and I guess that's kind of the, the Cajun tailing in. But um, this week, preparation, I mean, how are you guys adjusting to seeing those blitzes in the red zone? 
Yeah, there's, you know, various different formations and ways that we're going to have different blockers, you know, helping us out there. Um, yeah, some of the, the, like last week, Jonah really helped us out a lot in the red zone. He, he's got a heck of a leg and is doing an incredible job kicking the ball. I mean, he had what, was it four field goals? So yeah. those are obviously opportunities that we would like to score touchdowns um, and we're still working to improve that. But yeah, I mean, just finishing in the red zone is something that we're continuing to work on for sure. You asked me about it a little bit earlier, but in terms of you know finding that line that you don't want to cross, how important is it for you to find that line and go up to that and finish plays? I mean, how much pride do you kind of take in that? I guess, and why is that important maybe for a physical, you know, being physical and mentality? Yeah, I mean that's we talked about being physical, violent, and explosive. Um, and within that, if you know you are at that line, the offensive line has an opportunity to really take over a game and dominate up front. Um, and then, yeah, you go past that, then you start hurting your team. So just finding that line and playing hard and keeping it clean and not doing any of the extra stuff is where we need to be at constantly. What, what, what stoked your fire? What, what brings out that in, in you? Um, I think it's just the momentum of feeling like, you know, you're, you're chipping away, you're chipping away, and at some point that defense will break and just trying to find, you know, when that breaking point is and, and getting through that and then, dominating the rest and especially in the second half finishing strong I think it's just you know you feel that momentum starting to build we're, we're working on starting faster that's one of our goals um, but yeah that second half feeling that you know you're getting closer you're getting closer and you just really want to get it get it done you played I mean so many sports baseball basketball wrestling and stuff why why football why offensive line uh, ultimately I think it's because you know it's a job that's kind of in the shadows um, there's never one guy that's going to get all the praise. It's it's a unit, um, and that that's good and bad. It's, if it's one guy messing up, then it's thrown on the O line. If it's one guy doing great, it's thrown on the O line. So you always have four guys that are are with you through thick and thin, and they're just that's kind of the, what makes the offensive line a special unit to play on. And, and do you like that idea of like the camaraderie working as a group rather than one? Absolutely, absolutely. There's something special about um, just collectively being on the same page and seeing a play unfold, like especially going back, watching it in the film room and seeing everyone really doing their job well, and you see it develop, and then you see a, a run bust off, it's an extremely rewarding feeling. Do you see it the ball in the red zone? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, there's, there's um, obviously the defense plays different because you know there's not a full field they have to deal with anymore, so it's less field that they have, and they can start stacking guys in the box. So you get more guys in the box, you get different blitz patterns, um, a higher percentage of blitz, it's more things to handle. But yeah, I mean, it's a little different than open field for sure. We've heard over time, you know, one thing that George's first line's best attribute is that if something's wrong, he can, he can make it right. Yeah. When you go through a game without him, how much more do you appreciate some of the things that he brings to the table in those regards? Yeah, George is definitely a special player. I mean, so is Ashton, but we got down to I mean, I think we've had at this point in the season literally five running backs play, and um, that's a talented room. We have uh, a mentality of the next man up, so when things happen like that, we got to go on to the next guy, and he's got to do his job as well. So it's always nice to have you know your ones and twos rolling, but if that's not the case, then we got to we got to keep going no matter what. We talked to you like a day or two after all the changes with an OC and QB, and you're like the first offensive guy we talked to, and you're taking a lot of questions about them. I mean, you think about that day, that moment, and What's all changed now? Here you are three wins later, and you guys are rolling and stuff. And how, how different is the feeling in this building, I guess, than back then? Yeah, wins always kind of solve issues, I guess. Um, but I think we're doing a good job of, although, yes, we are winning, we're still going to continue to focus on the details and, and learn and continue to grow. Um, you can't get complacent. Any team can win on any given Saturday. So if you don't do your due diligence and, and really emphasize the details, then you could be in trouble. So. Yeah, winning feels good, it solves problems, but we're, we're staying very detail-oriented. How have you seen Dirk these last three weeks? I guess just if you guys have gotten to know him a little better in his style and all that, how have you just kind of seen him and what, how he's enjoying this? Um, he's funny, yeah, he's a little bit different. He's uh, sometimes not quite as animated as some of the other coaches, but he's, I don't know, he's, he's a fun guy to be around, honestly. Like, he's definitely passionate about it and extremely knowledgeable and can point things out and kind of give you a little different perspective sometimes. And I don't know, it's just, cool to see his point of view. He's kind of been clear to us, like, hey, I'm doing it for these two months to help out, and I'm, I'm going back to golfing and, you know, having my fun. Like, have you noticed, like, him, the fact that he knows this is it for him? Like, does he 
approaching it any differently than other OCs, or do you notice him like soaking it all in at all? Or um, I don't really know. I, I mean, I know he's completely bought in and given all he has right now, and we're putting plans together to do everything that we can on offense, and that's not going to stop. So I don't, I don't really have a great answer for you on that one. How much time? How much time does he specifically spend with the offensive line, especially in relation to Taylor and the way he runs? Uh, we always have offensive unit meetings um, as a whole. We'll go over kind of just the game plan. We'll go over um, our ready sheet. We'll go over different you know zones of the field and what our our uh, different plays on certain downs look like. Um, so yeah, he's he's always kind of communicating what the game plan that week is. And um, if it's not you know the offensive line as a unit, then in, you know he has to say something to somebody at practice. He'll do that, but. For the most part, he's he's dealing with the quarterbacks. Coach Keen's dealing with the offensive line, and then outside of that, it's the offense as a whole that will meet. Awesome. I mean, Haskin just seems like a pretty explosive dude. You know, I'm sure you're going to go against him in practice. What's it like trying to block him? Yeah, he's extremely explosive. He's very strong, um, and he's he's physical. It's he could be a problem for sure. And uh, yeah, if you're not playing with good hands, he'll get after you, no doubt. He showed me a video.